Hello citizens and welcome back. Last week we talked about piracy and trading locations going into recession. In today's video I would like to cover growth and how trading locations could respond to increased volume of commerce. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the army. Having all the information about the flow of commodities in Quantum is nice. But we have to show it to the players, and it also has to be reflected in the verse. For displaying the information to the players, CIG could use the already existing trade terminals by extending them to show information about nearby locations and maybe the galactic average of commodity prices. This would, however, depend heavily on data running, and we will take a look at that in a future video. But we do have a few options in showing this status in the verse without it. But first we need to take a look at the underlying process of growth. Let's say that we have a mining outpost that buys raw ore from miners and sells refined materials. Also, let's assume that cargo loading and the cargo refactor are complete and available. Let's say that for some reason, whether that is player activity or dynamic events or something random like high value minerals being found nearby, this outpost is seeing increased traffic of miners dropping off raw ore. This will cause the input storage to be full, lowering the purchase price. It will also cause many outputs to be produced, lowering the sale price. Under normal circumstances, the lowered purchase price would result in miners going somewhere else to sell their ore. But the close proximity of a profitable mining site may be enough to encourage miners to sell even at a reduced price. So now we have an interesting situation, where the input stockpile is full most of the time and the outputs are being manufactured constantly. In realistic conditions, knowing that this increased production would last, the outpost would try to expand. Either increase stockpile capacities or production throughput because this would give them the ability to process more resources, which increases the profit made by the outpost. And you have to keep in mind that the economy is driven by profit, so it would make sense for outposts to expand their stockpiles and production to match the increased demand. At the same time, the outposts have to expand the support infrastructure like landing pads, refueling equipment and crew quarters. Now, the obvious way to address this would be to simply increase the values for the given outpost in the background and not display this change in any way besides the increased values being visible in the trading terminals. But this is not quite the way we do things in Star Citizen. The ideal solution would be for outposts and settlements to shrink and grow based on how much they are used. This would give a very dynamic feeling to the universe and give players the impression that they are having an impact on the verse around them. This growth could include adding more landing pads and crew buildings. But it could also add medical facilities and food vendors, because if you have a large volume of players coming through the area, they will be interested in spending money on those services. If an outpost grows particularly large in size, there can even be mission givers appearing there giving players maintenance and protection missions. But now let's talk about the technical details of implementing this. There are two problems to solve here. First, how to determine the placement of buildings and objects, and second, when and how to actually place them and remove them. The design of location is done in an internal CAG tool called Rastar. As far as I know, CAG have no way to dynamically bring in whole structures that were not originally part of the given object container. They can only swap object containers as a whole, but this actually offers a solution. CAG could design multiple object containers for one outpost and use those depending on the level of prosperity of that outpost. And that actually solves the second problem as well. When we need to change the appearance of an outpost based on economic growth, the game can simply wait until its object container is unloaded and then when it's loaded back, the new outpost is loaded. The only problem with this approach might happen if too many people are at the outpost or they happen to visit it frequently enough so the object container doesn't unload. Though I imagine CAG have some kind of a mechanism to address this. Now, assuming that base construction will make it into the game, this creates opportunities for players to provide this as a mission with their construction ships. On top of this, outposts will require a growing amount of supplies as they grow in size. This also includes security and maintenance tasks. At the same time, growing outposts create spaces for virtual AI and mission givers to appear and interact with players. I think that we will see this feature in the game at some point in the future. However, I think that the first iteration will simply be changing the values on the background rather than physically changing the outpost. There is also a problem with the physical form of the outpost themselves. CAG want to introduce the homestead style outpost with Pyro. This is a very different style of outpost compared to the prefab style currently seen in Stanton. I wonder if all of the prefab style outposts will eventually get replaced. 
And with that being said, that's all for tonight. What do you think? Should outposts change their appearance depending on use? How much should players be able to affect outposts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, fly safe, and I will see you in the verse.